There is a new medical controversy about the use of aspirin for the prevention of heart disease, especially in the area of preventing heart attacks and strokes. This is not a new controversy. It's been going on for the last several years. This video presentation is designed to give you the facts so that you can make an informed decision. And in giving you the facts, you need to know how your body produces a gas in the bloodstream called nitric oxide that naturally prevents blood clots. So the question is, which is better, aspirin or nitric oxide for the prevention of blood clots? Let's start with aspirin since most people are familiar with this pharmaceutical drug. Aspirin has been widely promoted as a simple method for the prevention of heart disease. Just take an aspirin per day since it can't hurt you. Well, on August 31st of 2009, Yahoo Health had an article entitled, Daily Aspirin May Do More Harm Than Good, in which researchers found, quote, The risks of bleeding from taking aspirin were such that its routine use in healthy people cannot be supported. Although they did not dispute its use in patients with a history of vascular problems. The title of the study was Aspirin for Asymptomatic Atherosclerosis and was funded in part by the British Heart Foundation. It involved 3,350 men and women aged 50 to 75 years old who had low ankle brachial indexes but no symptoms of heart disease or history of heart attack. Study subjects were given either a daily dose of 100 milligrams of aspirin or a placebo and evaluated over an eight-year period. The results showed that there was no significant difference between the two groups in the number of heart attacks, strokes, and other cardiovascular events suffered. However, major bleeding that required hospitalization occurred in 2% of the aspirin group, but only 1.2% in the placebo group. No statistical difference in cardiovascular events, but a significantly higher increase in major bleeding that required hospitalization for the aspirin group. Now let's fast forward to June 5th of 2012, just a little over two weeks ago from the recording of this presentation. ABC News published an online article and also spent a significant portion of their network news with Diane Sawyer talking about a study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. This study found that taking 300 milligrams or less of aspirin increases the risk of major stomach or brain bleeding by 55 percent, greater than what previous research has suggested. Quoting from the June 5, 2012 online article by Carrie Gann, ABC News Medical Unit, quote, Italian researchers studied more than 370,000 hospitalized patients looking for differences in how aspirin affects patients with diabetes and those without. But their findings applied to millions of people hoping to prevent heart problems with aspirin. Of the more than 186,000 patients taking a daily dose of aspirin, researchers counted nearly 2,300 cases of gastrointestinal bleeding and nearly 1,300 cases of brain bleeding. End of quote. When you add the gastrointestinal and brain bleeding numbers together, it represents about 2% of the participants, very similar to the British study we just talked about. According to Dr. Antonio Nicolucci, one of the study's authors, the risks of bleeding were much higher than what had been previously suspected and should prompt doctors to carefully consider a patient's individual health before prescribing aspirin. He went on to say, quote, if the risk of having a cardiovascular event is low, then the risk of bleeding will likely offset any beneficial effect of aspirin, end of quote. When asked about this study, Dr. Thomas Schwenk, Dean of the University of Nevada School of Medicine, had this to say, quote, no preventive approach is without risk. If the benefits are barely measurable, but the risks are real and possibly greater, then the decision-making may shift against the use of aspirin, end of quote. Dr. Jolanta Siller Matula of the Medical University of Vienna wrote an editorial about this study. She defined the study numbers this way. For those who have had a previous heart attack or stroke, 10,000 patients taking aspirin to prevent a second heart attack or stroke would prevent about 250 heart problems but would cause about 40 cases of brain bleeding. For those who have some risk factors but have never had a heart attack, 
10,000 patients taking aspirin would be expected to prevent seven heart attacks or strokes but cause bleeding problems in four patients. As Dr. Steve Nissen, chair of cardiovascular medicine at the Cleveland Clinic stated, quote, when the cardiovascular risk is low, the adverse effects of aspirin overwhelm any benefits, end of quote. This information has left many confused on when to recommend aspirin, even those in the medical profession. Now let's try to cut through the confusion to talk about nitric oxide. Most people have never heard of nitric oxide, and if they have, they really don't understand how critical it is to your cardiovascular health. Yet nitric oxide is so critical to cardiovascular health that the 1998 Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded to three American researchers who discovered how your endothelium converts the amino acid L-arginine into nitric oxide, the master signaling molecule of your entire cardiovascular system. One of these Nobel laureates is Dr. Louis J. Ignaro. He wrote a national bestseller called No More Heart Disease. I'd like to focus on the subtitle of his book. It says, quote, how nitric oxide can prevent, even reverse, heart disease and strokes, end of quote. Now I've introduced you to a word and organ that most people, even those in the medical profession, know very little about. It's called the endothelium. Your endothelium is now considered the largest secreting organ in your body. What's amazing, it's only one cell thick. It lines the inside of your heart. The inside of all your arteries, arterioles, venules, and veins are lined by this one cell thick organ. Your capillaries are just extensions of the endothelium. Research over the last 10 years has shown the endothelium to be a multifunctional organ involved in metabolic, immunologic, and cardiovascular functions. One of those functions is to convert the amino acid L-arginine into nitric oxide. To emphasize how important this is, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. John Cook, the Director of Vascular Medicine at Stanford University. He published a book called The Cardiovascular Cure. Notice his subtitle, How to Strengthen Your Self-Defense Against Heart Attack and Stroke. Dr. Cook goes on to say the following, quote, this book will introduce you to the magic that is inside your blood vessels. It comes in the shape of a molecule, one of the simplest molecules found in nature. This molecule is nitric oxide, or NO, a substance so powerful that it can actually protect you from heart attack and stroke. Best of all, your body can make it on its own. Nitric oxide is your body's own built-in natural protection against heart disease. End of quote. So here's how nitric oxide directly addresses this issue of preventing blood clots. Nitric oxide inhibits platelet adhesion, activation, secretion, and aggregation, as well as promoting platelet disaggregation. What this means is that nitric oxide is extremely important in preventing blood clots in the vascular system to significantly reduce the risk for heart attacks and strokes, all without side effects. Additionally, Nitric oxide is your body's most powerful vasodilator. This means that nitric oxide causes the smooth muscle of your vascular wall to relax, which helps to keep your blood pressure in a normal range. And as your blood vessels dilate, it reduces the chance of a blood clot becoming lodged or stuck, leading to a stroke or heart attack. By having proper levels of nitric oxide in your bloodstream, you will help bring your blood pressure back into a normal range to reduce the number one risk factor for a stroke or heart attack, which is high blood pressure, as well as reduce the number one cause of a stroke or heart attack, which is a blood clot. Finally, nitric oxide has one more critical role in cardiovascular health. It helps to repair damage done to the endothelium and keep it free from plaque formations and calcification. The American Heart Association estimates that 74% of all cardiovascular disease is related to atherosclerosis, plaque formations within the arteries, and arterial sclerosis, calcification or hardening of the arteries. Proper levels of nitric oxide help to prevent both of these issues. Thus, nitric oxide helps to prevent the narrowing of the blood vessels by repairing damage done to the endothelium. Nitric oxide relaxes the smooth muscle of the vascular wall to dilate blood vessels which improves blood flow and keeps blood pressure in a normal range. And nitric oxide naturally prevents blood clots. 
When you properly nourish and support your endothelium to help it properly produce therapeutic levels of nitric oxide, this naturally protects you from blood clots and does it without the side effects that are inherent to aspirin. Aspirin is a drug and it has the potential for other side effects besides the risk of bleeding. If a person wants to reduce their risk for blood clotting, then the proper repair of and support for their endothelial cells is vitally important. This can be done nutritionally through food or supplementation. The four key nutrients that help support your endothelium in its production of nitric oxide are L-arginine, L-citrulline, vitamin D3, vitamin K2. You need between 4 to 6 grams of L-arginine to help your endothelium create a therapeutic increase in nitric oxide. You need between 200 to 1,000 milligrams of L-citrulline to help your endothelium recycle the L-arginine for long-term production of therapeutic levels of nitric oxide. You need vitamins D3 and K2 to properly regulate the calcium levels in your bloodstream since calcium is needed to start the enzymatic process to create nitric oxide. And there are other vitamins and nutrients that can aid your endothelium in its production of nitric oxide. The nutritional supplement that I recommend to my clients is Prorogenine Plus from Synergy Worldwide. This product has the proper combination of ingredients. The purity and potency of the ingredients are guaranteed. There are 262 quality assurance steps that go into the manufacturing of this product and it's used in mainstream medical facilities and has supporting studies to show the effectiveness of this product in creating therapeutic increases in nitric oxide. In fact, many consider Prorogenin Plus to be the best nitric oxide supplement in the marketplace. We hope this information will help you better answer the question, which is better, aspirin or nitric oxide for the prevention of blood clots? If you have any questions about this information, then please contact us at the Synergy Co-op. I've placed their contact information on the screen. We're part of a team whose mission is to help save a million lives. We'll work with you and your health care provider to help you properly nourish your endothelium for improved nitric oxide production. Please call Dan Hammer or Jean LaValle if you have any questions. We're here to assist you and your health care provider better understand the importance of your endothelium and nitric oxide for improved cardiovascular health and wellness.